In this lab, we're doing an acid catalyzed dehydration of an alcohol, which occurs via an elimination reaction. When alcohols are dehydrated, they turn from an alcohol to an alkene. Specifically, we're going to be dehydrating 2-methyl 2-butanol with sulfuric acid. We're going to isolate it using distillation. And then at the end, we're going to test the double bond using a bromine test and a potassium permanganate test. All right, so here we have, micro we have our micro distillation set up. We have a water condenser here with water flowing through, a Hickman column, and then we have a sand bath that we're going to lower this onto when we get the um, five mil conical vial. I've gone ahead and cooled about a mil of distilled water in the vial, just in a nice water bath. And next we're going to add half a mil of sulfuric acid slowly, and then a mil of our 2-methyl 2-butanol. And then we're going to connect it all up, distill it. We're looking to keep the sand bath between 90 and 110 degrees Celsius. And then we're going to put a thermometer down into the um, Hickman column to measure the temperature of the vapor, and we're looking for the vapor that distills and collects in this little um, dip right here between 30 and 45 degrees Celsius. So we will, once we get that, we'll disconnect the water condenser, get a um, glass pipette in there, pipette it out, and begin our workup. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in our sand bath and we'll lower this down and get screwed in, connect it to hold it securely. So now we're going to slowly add our half mil of sulfuric acid. All right, next we're gonna add our 2-methyl 2-butanol. All right, so I have a mil of the 2-methyl 2-butanol. Again, we're gonna add it in. All right, now that we have all our reagents in here, we're gonna lower our distillation set up and get it all connected. Yeah, you just screw in to secure it. Get into the same bath. Connect up our thermometer. And we want our thermometer to hang out in here, the bot tip of it, so that we're catching the temperature of the distillate or the vapor as it comes out. So about there, just to show you the setup, we have our thermometer using a clamp just to hold it at the right level. And now we are going to do the distillation. All right, so I've turned the heating on. We're going to keep the temperature of the sand around 90 to 110 in between there and we want the to collect the distillate that happens when it's 30 to 45 degrees celsius All right, so right now we have a really quick rise. As you saw, it bubbled really fast there. We're at 109.6 on the temperature. I've turned the heat off on the heating plate. We may need to raise it if it goes too much higher, but we're about 38 degrees Celsius on the vapor temperature. And as you can see, we are collecting liquid in here. And we will see if we get enough. So temperature's starting to go back down again. All right, it looks like we have enough liquid in there, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure the heat's off all the way. And raise up our, take our thermometer out, get it to the side. Turn 
off our water and disconnect the water condenser. Lay it off the side and we'll drain the water out of it in a moment. Alright, so I have a pipette with long end on it and a small test tube. And we're going to get just the liquid that's in the side there and put it in the small test tube. It's like about a mil. We're also going to move this out so as it begins to cool down. I'll put the water condenser back on just to condense anything that comes back out. So there's not much gas coming out. All right, so now I have 0.3 milliliters of three molar sodium hydroxide. We're gonna add that in to neutralize our distillate. All right, so I'm gonna use this glass pipette to mix up the two layers. All right, now that our layers have separated, we're going to take off the top layer and transfer it to a new test tube. Try and get just the top layer. We're going to dry it with some anhydrous sodium sulfate, so if you do get a little of the bottom layer, it's okay. Take this one away. Bring over our new test tube. And we're going to dry it with a small amount of anhydrous sodium sulfate. Now we put our sodium and hydrosodium sulfate in there, we're going to transfer it one more time to a new test tube and leave behind the anhydrous sodium sulfate. I right, don't think I can get any more. So I'm going to move this back to the side. And this is our product. Now we're going to test it with a bromine test and a potassium permanganate test. Alright, so I'm going to move our product over to the side here and I'm going to use this for the test tube for testing it. Alright, so here we have some potassium permanganate and some water. Alright, so this is a lot more vibrant of color so we should see a better color change about half a mil or so. Now we're going to add a couple drops. There is a little bit of color change. I don't know if it's shown up on camera. There's a thin layer up here at the top that is a kind of a brownish yellow. Add. So that is positive for a double bond. I'm going to try the bromine test one more time. And we'll see if we get a positive result on that. But I'm going to bring this closer to the camera. As you can see, there is a layer that's formed that has a brownish yellow. And if we shake it, the entire solution becomes that yellowish color. I'll try the bromine test one more time. It's a really light color on the bromine. It's supposed to go from a orangish to a clear. But since we have so little bromine, it's a yellowish color. Here is the bromine solution. It does have that slight yellow to it, so we'll have to pay close attention to see if there is a color change to clear. Alright, there does look like there's a little bit of color change. It's hard to tell this one. Let's shake it up and see if we still see any yellow. Yeah, so I'm not seeing any yellow. So it's gone from a very, very light yellow to a clear solution. You can look again at the color change of these two products. So bromine went from light yellow to clear, and our potassium permanganate it went from a purplish violet color to a yellow color. Next you'll be given an NMR spectra where you can determine the ratio of the alkenes that are formed. There's two possible alkenes. So the NMR spectra should give you the ability to determine the ratio of the two alkenes.